Hello and welcome to our first debate on Rwanda in 2016 and I think it's appropriate that we begin with the big picture uh, look at uh, Rwanda's economy. Now some of you will remember last year towards the, the end of the year we talked about the 2016 economic outlook. So the question you ask is so what has changed between then and now? Well I can tell you a lot of things have changed. Number one, <coughs> we've had a change in the constitution here. President Kagame potentially is going to run for a third term and then also in the meantime we've heard of course China not imploding but slowly down markedly and beginning to affect everyone. So we want to know what that means for Rwanda. So to understand what's going on, let me introduce my guests. I begin on the right, uh, my very good friend now, I can call him uh, Thomas Kigabo, Chief Economist at the Central Bank of Rwanda. He joins us again. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. And for the first time, we are joined on the program by Eddie Gold Monday, Managing Director of Cran Bank Limited, Rwanda's youngest bank. Thank you for joining us, ma'am. And last but not least, Emery Rubagenga, he is CEO of Roca Mining. Emery, thank you for joining us today. Let's begin with the big picture look. As I said, last year we spoke about Rwanda, and we <coughs> spoke about the fact that Rwanda is in a good space, if you like. We're still talking about growth potentially that will come in between 6 and 6.5%. Six and when you look at the overall African growth picture, we're talking probably about half of that. So Rwanda is in a good space, but still, there are threats. Has anything changed between the time that we spoke about last year and now? And have you indeed changed your own economic outlook forecast figure? Yeah, um, thank you so much. I, I think no, nothing very big has changed because um, when we did projection for 2016, we already knew that uh, China will continue to pose problems with uh, implication to the rest of the world because uh, China is a very big economy and uh, we have uh, this slowdown in uh, commodity prices which is also uh, challenging everybody. Um, we have seen for example the mining sector suffering uh, with our export declining and the production in the sector declining and we are expecting to we are, we are not expecting to have a much improvement in that uh, sector because of China and uh, the rest of the world. But we, we, we took this into consideration to, 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 to make our projection for 2016. Right. Yeah, so we have not revised the, our projections. So China has not changed in a way that dramatically changes your outlook on the global economy. No. Some people are suggesting that the surprise is that the figure has come in close to the government figure, but that, that still is going to impact and hurt. No, no, you, you, are, you are absolutely right. Uh, <coughs> uh, if you have read the, the, the forecast published by IMF on 19th January, means... Uh, yes, uh, a couple this, of days ago. Yeah, exactly. They, 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 they have listed a number of uh, risks for forecasting, including the situation in China, which may become even worse. Right. So, uh, but uh, I, I think what is most important in our economy is not only Rwanda, but African economies, yeah. is how each country will define its own strategies to deal with this, uh, this situation in China in a global Absolutely. economy. For example, um, in Rwanda, why we are not changing our projection, uh, the government has put in place different strategies to continue supporting yeah. the, the economic development like uh, focusing on agriculture sector. Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, we have very strong measures to be sure that the season B will be very good. The Minister of Agriculture and all uh, other institutions which are involved in that sector are really working seriously to be sure that uh, the, the, the sector uh, the, the productivity in the sector increases. Yeah, and I think uh, he and would have wanted you to say the yes. focus is on mining, but I'm going to come to him and I'm going to come up with the detail of what the government yes, is focusing yes, on. Yes. In my introductory remarks, I made mention of the fact that uh, the other big change that has happened is that uh, President <coughs> Kagame potentially now can run for a third term. Now, that's a big story because it impacts the national environment. I remember discussing with one of my producers here and we were saying, what if he says he doesn't want to run anymore? And what will that mean for Rwanda on the other side? On the other side, of course, some people will say, oh, that will mean potentially donor flows are going to impact. No, for, for, for me, it's a, it's a very good development at the end of the day. It's a factor of for stability. And uh, this on the economic side, it's very, very important because you can have investment, you can have uh, policies, but the stability is, is very, very important. When people are 
clear about the feature. I'm talking about uh, people in Rwanda, but in the region, yeah. the, in the global environment. Absolutely. This is a positive factor which definitely will help us. Which could change again that national picture that we're talking about. Let yeah. me bring in the other guests. Uh, Edgar, let me begin with you. From a banking perspective, when you look at this landscape versus what you saw uh, towards the end of last year, has anything changed dramatically for the better or for the worse? Where are you in terms of your look and how you, 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 you see business panning out? <coughs> Now, looking at uh, the strategies we had towards the end of the year and what we had already planned for this year, as I already put it, uh, there isn't, math, uh, there isn't uh, much change. We are still looking at the strategies we planned because the, the same economic outlook, the same growth that has been anticipated, the same government pro uh, uh, projects and, um, and, uh, and plans have not changed. Right. Uh, because we are working within an environment that is fostered by the government. Right. So when there's and that... And that remains stable. And that is which stable. Which is what, what banks want, is Definitely, it? right. Yes. So what we are looking at is just to pick up on what we've already put in place, ride on the stability of uh, what the government has put in place, and continue with also supporting the government, uh, um, the government uh, strategies. Right. A uh, uh, case to point out is the agriculture sector. There's a lot going in there. Um, in the past, as bankers, would be shying away from uh, agriculture. Right. But when you look at the strategies that have been in, put in place, the different projects, I mean projects that are within Minagri, and the way they are trying to support those people who are dealing right with primary agriculture, yeah. there is um, uh, a good focus and there's also stability in there. I'll give an example with some of those I'm dealing with. Please. Um, uh, there is post-harvest post support, which has always been a challenge to agriculture. Right. But now the, project, uh, the government has come in with different guarantees, with different support, motivating the, uh, the people down there to um, uh, harvest both for uh, re-injection into agriculture in terms of seed, Right. and also to keep until they get market. So they will, be, they will not be um, running through selling and losing out. Right. And oh, to I me, see. that is a good focus yeah, on agriculture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Emery. I think uh, you have heard very uh, eloquent uh, f uh, emphasis and, uh, 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 how shall I put it, preference mm -hmm. uh, between our first two pickers for agriculture as to the exclusion of mining. I'm trying to stock the fires here. Uh, <laughs> but from your perspective, your world has changed, hasn't it? Because when you look at the pressure that we've continued to see coming onto commodities and the impact that it is having, number one, on pricing, number two, on capital allocation across the globe as well, you're certainly seeing pressures. You don't feel any relief, do you? It's, it has been uh, a very hectic uh, three years. Um, from 2012, mm -hmm. the prices uh, of commodities, like you rightly mentioned, has you know, there's a, down. Th there's actually a saying in my language, in Shona, which says that what forgets is the X. The tree does not forget. You mm -hmm. actually mentioned three years. It's been three years of pain. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> it has been hard, but uh, then again, as business people, we always have to, to strategize and sure. think how to, to get out of... Uh, of these uh, difficulties uh, through uh, the help of the government, of sure. course, and, and, and the banks. Uh, th the sector has suffered terribly uh, on, on prices, just to give you a, like uh, we were talking earlier. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the price are, are unbelievably uh, down today. To just to give an example, the, yeah. the, the tin, which uh, three years back was at 33,000 a ton, is at 13,000 a ton. $33,000 a ton. Exactly. Uh, and uh, it's, it's almost uh, a third to, to the price that we're having today. Yeah. So when you have such uh, uh, an impact on, 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 on the commodity that you're producing, definitely, and uh, the country relying on mining as one of the main sector uh, has been affected as well. Mm -hmm. So we, we, are, we need to produce three times more in order to have the same impact on the, the, yeah. the national economy. Absolutely. It's almost like hearing the Saudis and the oil guys, isn't it? Ramping up production more so that they realize the revenue that they were at, but at lower prices. Yes. The, the difficulties here now is to have the financial capabilities to do that. Yeah. Then uh, with our banks, local commercial banks, not that excited to enter in that sec specific sector yeah. due to 
obvious reasons. We 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 <laughs> privileged to have like uh, the support of the government. I was hoping Eddie God would say no. We are excited about mining, <laughs> and it's certainly one of the sectors. <laughs> oh, I would be uh, Eddie God. Thank you for, for you'll be knocking on the door. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, definitely, straight after the call. <laughs> but I was going to say also that uh, your sector. So you mine tin, but you also mine tantalum. You also mine tungsten, yeah. and those are two areas that I thought perhaps potentially would shield you because I mean we're still buying our phones like uh, there's it's nobody's business. Uh, the technologies that people talk about. I mean, WEF in Davos right now is focusing on the so-called fourth industrial revolution, and that's all built around tech, and tech demands your resources. There's, there's no support that's coming through there? No, we, well, uh, th these three um, different commodities have suffered differently, um, but all of them because the, the, the biggest demand is coming from China, sure. which has been uh, also affected economically. The growth has been not the same. So, uh, for for even these other specialist minerals. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, th these three uh, elements are, are are produced in in several parts of the world, but uh, mainly here in the region. And forty percent, more than forty percent of our pro total production goes to China. Mm -hmm. So, um, and okay. when when you consider that seventy percent of the imports in in minerals has. Uh, uh, gone down, wow. uh, so you, the okay. impact is huge. Yeah, I want to yeah. come back and fully understand that, but I want to talk about the African continent and its impact on Rwanda and the slowdown that we have seen across the African continent. We saw recently figures coming out of the World Bank as well as the IMF. They have both revised their figures for economic growth in sub-Saharan Africa lower. How does that impact Rwanda? Yeah, uh, when you, you talk about uh, Africa, um, I think you have two groups of sure. countries. Yeah. The first one is uh, uh, composed of countries exporting oil. This group is seriously suffering because of uh, what is happening in the uh, international price of oil. Uh, they, they are trying to adjust the fiscal policies and the budget and the this is very challenging. On the other side, we have uh, net importers of oils, like, like, Rwanda. like Rwanda, in the, the whole region at the end of the day. Uh, one, these countries are not much suffering because on, uh, we have these uh, low uh, oil prices which is helping us to improve the external sector, keeping other factors um, at the same level, and uh, this has also contributed to reduce pressures on inflation, sure. and uh, giving some rooms to central banks to uh, implement a commodity monetary policy to support the demand side of the economy yes. through the credit private sector and whatever. Yeah, th th that's one. But w what is happening at the global level again? Uh, for example, the improvement in the U.S. economy, even if they still have challenges, d d this is also creating some challenges in terms of uh, capital flight, and uh, this may continue to have pressures on our uh, exchange rate and uh, limit their commodity monetary policy. So uh, d d that's one. But second, I think our partners in the trend in, in Africa are still doing very well. This mm. is the East African region. So you haven't felt as much pain because no, of uh, this slower a, growth? A, exactly. Uh, we have seen, for example, the demand of our production from the region increasing. You have been, uh, probably will come back to that when we'll be talking about strategies of the, the government yes. to, to deal with these issues. I think there, there is a need today to focus more on the region than on the global economy, which is really suffering. The, 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 the region is still doing well with yeah. challenges, absolutely. That, that's clear for everybody. Yeah. But uh, we're still doing well. Absolutely. The other big challenge, of course, is skills, isn't it? Yes. Because that's one of the difficulties that the African continent faces. And sometimes we underplay it because we don't want it to be too exposed too much. We want to say it's other factors. But really, we need the ability to make those things. And we also need the, the, the engineers. We yes. also need the, the, the scientists, etc. Yes. It, uh, thanks for highlighting that point because that's number two problem we have. Uh, the geologists and mining engineers that we have locally are, are, were trained like 
20 years back in, in Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we're, we, we're facing a big challenge of having qualified and, and experienced uh, mining engineers and geologists. Sure. So um, uh, luckily the, the National University of Rwanda has uh, launched uh, a program, a geology program uh, in a, a totally independent department. So mm. we're expecting in four years to have yeah. uh, these young, mm. uh, vibrant uh, graduates yeah. uh, from that specific department. But it will take time. Absolutely. So in, that, in the meantime, we need to position ourselves uh, learning with, uh, from the best and uh, partnering with who, who has the expertise yeah. to, to, to tackle the opportunity. Absolutely. Let's talk about the issue of funding because you raised it as one of the issues that you face. And you are faced with the two people who will answer that question because she provides loans to companies he provides uh, this is the, the support that's required as well as uh, uh, from a government perspective. Is this something that we should be focusing on more, really, especially the mining sector in Rwanda? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think here the main problem, as my friend says, is more linked to the uh, price of, of this kind of product. Because yeah. this, is putting, this is increasing more risk in the sector. Uh, that's one. Uh, second, we, we had some uh, s some problems because we had companies with, let me say, uh, one-year license to operate in a sector. In that case, it was not possible for a commercial bank to give loan to a for, to, sure. for, for too, one too, year. Too but this term, problem yeah. has been solved by the government. Okay. This uh, this is showing how really the government is trying to to solve. Um, uh, to remove these big challenges to the sector, right. <coughs> and the uh, banks have money. They have money to to give to this sector, and the, the government is playing its role by removing these challenges. Yeah, and I think, unfortunately, with the, what is happening on global market, this is kind of limiting all effort you have been doing. Yeah. We hope that this will be a short-term problem so that what you had planned to do for the sector yeah. be implemented. Absolutely. Rate. Eddie Gold, so you are here. What are the challenges of lending to a mining sector that is uh, facing these challenges, number one, on the skills levels, number two, also on the, 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 the pricing that we are seeing for the commodities that, 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 that they produce? Um, uh, first and foremost, uh, we look at the, at the sector itself. There are embedded risks that are within the sector. Yeah. When you start from uh, you know, exploration, there's great that requires to be injected in there. Yes. And uh, as <coughs> banks, definitely, that is something we would not have an appetite for. And even after knowing that uh, uh, there is m the, the minerals are here, yeah. again, getting to the final product, because what comes out is now taken out in its raw form. Mm. So again, the, 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 it takes long to recover the capital injected in there. And I think that's what my colleague here is saying, that the government is coming in with initiatives yeah. to even out the risks that are within that particular sector. Yeah. Then the banks can come in, because at least uh, uh, yeah, we, we do, we, we are not risk averse, but at least we manage risks. Sure. Mm. And uh, we calculate the appetite or the, the risks that we want to take on. Could the government help you stomach part of that risk by doing a little more than they are doing now? Uh, what, 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 what bright ideas could government come up with that would help you guys? I know you guys are very clever in terms of how yeah, you manage of, your own risks. Like if we were to come, out at, would come up uh, at the level of uh, maybe in the industrializing the mining sector, like he's talking about, there is uh, an issue of, uh, uh, of energy. Right. What can the government do in there? So that the cost of production for these uh, industries is also managed at uh, a minimum level. Mm -hmm. And then the, when the banks come in with their cost, then it's something that can come up. Because uh, if you look at the, 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 the cost of production, and then again you add in the cost of financing, yes. it becomes quite expensive to come up with uh, their output. Mm -hmm. And as he put it rightly, where the raw materials are going, yeah. the, 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 like China, for instance, yeah. the economy has its own challenges, sure. which again plow back 
into the economy here. Absolutely. So first is to understand the challenges that are within the sector and see how the government can come up to, it might not take them out, uh, but it can even them out. Yeah. And then we see how the bank can ride on that kind of yeah. uh, Thomas, platform. Mm -hmm. Could the government come up with more initiatives on the beneficiation story? Because we know this is a story that we've been talking about across the African continent for many, many years. And yet very little has actually gone on. What you don't see are specific policies that are geared towards enabling beneficiation. If you wanted to produce uh, the stuff that's used for his tungsten, the stuff that's used for his tantalum in China here, can't government come in and offer help? Tax uh, holidays and all those other things that we talk uh, about. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Easy um, loans. Yeah, I, I think uh, before we start facing this issue of uh, China and the other uh, uh, big economies, I remember we have organized a big meeting, Central Bank, Private Sector Federation, uh, and the Association of Commercial, Centr uh, Commercial Banks here in Rwanda to talk about the sector. Right. We had at that time discussed about all challenges, and the government were represented there. And I think we're in a very good direction to solve these problems. Sure. And uh, even the banks were ready, they have at that time uh, raised some issues like w what she's saying about the risk and this. Yes. And we had agreed on uh, the way forward. But unfortunately what is happening now uh, in China, reducing the, 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 the price, the, the profit from the sector, this was not expected to have big impact as it is today. Okay. So uh, but my view is when this problem will be over, I think we have already, the government has already with the private sector and the commercial banks and the central bank yeah. have planned to support the sector. So uh, I think we had this external shock yeah. before starting implementing yeah. what you yeah. had, uh, we had decided. Warren Buffett says that when the markets are done, that's when you look for your value chips to pick them up. Is this the right time for government perhaps to be looking at your sector? You exactly. Think? That's exactly the right time. And uh, the Minister of Mines uh, mm -hmm. does a lot of efforts in yeah. terms of exploration sure. uh, research. Uh, and and they, they invest significantly in, in that mm -hmm. direction. Sure. And s some of the results are coming out now. Mm -hmm. And we believe that the prices the, uh, of commodities has always, uh, it's up and down. Yeah, it's so we can quiet. expect, we can mm -hmm. expect uh, independently of, of what is happening uh, in China's economy, yeah. we can expect in, in some few years to come mm -hmm. to, to have uh, better prices. Absolutely. But this sure. is the right time now to strategize mm -hmm. and, and, and join hands uh, with the banks. Yeah. Uh, the banks need to have a little more appetite into the long term projects and, and uh, not only the, the, the quick wins of uh, financing yeah. some, yes. some uh, commercial transactions, uh, which we understand uh, as business people they need to do, but they, they could also focus into something which will have a much more bigger impact yeah. uh, to, the, to the national economy. Think of the long term, Edward. That's what he's saying. Yeah, he, he's actually right and uh, uh, we had a small chat before coming in here <laughs> and I was like, you know what, it's, uh, we, it's just a matter of uh, identifying uh, the funds that can go into long-term investment. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the only way to go and with uh, maybe longer grace periods. Uh, like mm -hmm. uh, we do support projects and yeah. we do uh, give grace periods up sure. to two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, the mining sector is a, a bit unique. Uh, yeah. It needs more than the two years really grace yes. period if we yeah. are to look at it critically. So that, uh, that calls for better planning on the side of the banks yeah. and especially where we get in credit lines from other uh, European investment Could the banks. central bank perhaps help you access those long-term uh, credit funds that would enable you to give them uh, longer periods to pay back the loans? Uh, I think it would depend on the central bank's uh, 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 planning and uh, strategize uh, what the, the policies they have in place. Yeah. Because uh, they could be, they could arrange 
uh, on um, um, a wider base, uh, some, some of these funds, and then they are channeled through uh, the banks to the beneficiaries. So the commercial banks can, be, can, can manage them, yeah. of course, uh, looking at the cost and what the bank can put up, yeah. but uh, these longer term uh, 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 funds can also mm -hmm. be organized through the central bank, Absolutely. if they so wished. So, uh, uh, Quickly, yeah. yeah, I think that's what we have been doing. No, normally, the role of central bank is to show that uh, the regulatory framework is conducive for mm. commercial banks to have this long-term loan from abroad. Absolutely. And uh, uh, if, if you just check numbers, for the last three years, this kind of loans have been increasing due to uh, our regulatory framework as a central bank really to support yeah. commercial bank doing their business. But the decision of lending to a specific uh, sector of the economy yeah. is still the decision of, uh, of commercial banks. Absolutely. I'm certainly hoping yeah. that this conversation continues yeah. and there sure. will be some lines of credit that will be coming through yeah, Rwanda sure. to enable uh, Emery to start uh, thinking long term here. We are discussing Rwanda's challenges in 2016. When we come back on the other side <coughs> of the break, we want to talk about where the opportunities lie and perhaps what can be done to try to foster those opportunities and make sure that Rwanda grows stronger than the 6 to 6.5 percent that has been focused. Join us after the break. Welcome back. We are discussing the economic challenges that will face Rwanda in 2016. <coughs> yeah. During the break, we actually were discussing and uh, uh, one of the things that really came up strongly is the issue of the cost of funding. This, of course, is a big issue that we tackled last year. And I remember on this program, uh, Governor John Wangomwa saying that if there's any company in Rwanda that is paying more than 15, 16 percent, they should be asking themselves serious questions. Well, it has come up again. And I want to start with you, Thomas, about the cost of funding issue. And I want you to look at it this way. Inflation is running below double digits. And yet lending rates are around 15, 16%. Why is it like that? Why can't we reduce these rates? Let's unilaterally cut them down. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, one, I think we, we need to not exaggerate because <laughs> the lending rate in Rwanda compared to other countries in the region is very low. And, uh, let me continue. I think Emery doesn't care. N yeah, no, no. He just wants it below. No, uh, let, let me explain. Why, why are you comparing Rwanda <laughs> with... <laughs> exactly, I'm coming there. Now, we need to compare Rwanda with the region because we are now receiving regional banks here operating here. Hello, that's Craig. A, yeah, the example, yeah, the good example true. is I here. I wouldn't syndicate so, uh, th that's the one. loan here with the, my, my country. The yeah, other side. no, no let, let me continue. That's one. But let us come now to our case. Sure. I think an average of 17 or 18 percent as a, as a lending rate may not be very high, even if it is not low. That, that, that's, that, that's, that's clear. So, uh, Am I saying it's a mathematical impossibility to pay it back? No, uh, I, I'm not so sure because when you, you, you just che check numbers today about the non-performing loan, means people <laughs> who fail to pay. It's just six percent. <laughs> it's nothing. It's, it's pain. It's we, we, yeah, yeah, we, we are no, paying, no, but that yeah, does yeah. not mean that no, we no, no, are no, 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 Yeah, I, I'm coming there. Um, I, I do agree that uh, there is room for improvement. Right. And I think our banks have to think about that because um, they have been investing a lot in uh, in technology. And as she said, they are new, they're still investing in technology. Yeah. This is cost of running business, which definitely increased the, the, the cost of the pro, pro product. For sure. Yeah, for sure. But I think uh, the biggest bank in this, country, in this country have been investing also in this technology for the last uh, three, four years. Mm. And they can expect to have some... Uh, reduction in the in the lending rate because at the end of the day this increase in the operating cost has is now stable than than this but why are we not accessing international markets where we know the rates are much lower i mean boons right now what are you talking about you're talking around two percent the americans is pretty much the same thing why can't local banks access those those those, those loans and pass on the cost of those because i imagine even when you've added all these other costs and exchange rate risk and all those other things I can't see it being more than 
By the way, even when you're looking at these funds we're talking about from uh, uh, those developed countries, yes. if, for instance, IFC wanted to bring in money, if you want to borrow from them, yeah. they have their own, also their own calculation, and they talk about the country risk. Okay? okay. At the end of the day, the money you get in has that risk embedded in, and then the cost is also higher. And then so, it will end up around local rates. Yeah. The dollar, the, the dollar alone will go for 7 percent, will go for 8 percent, will go for... Mm. There are those who can access it at 6 percent. But when you get it, at least in my former experience, when yeah. I calculated, uh, we're, we're, getting, uh, we're getting it almost at 5 percent. So if you get it at 5 percent and you want to put in your, cost, your, 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 your overhead cost and all the rest, yeah. you, you find it going a little higher. But as he, as he put it, uh, I mean, my colleague here, uh, the interest rates in Rwanda are comparingly low than in the region. Because right. uh, if I wanted to syndicate a loan here of a dollar, yeah. I could say I'll give it at 8%. But I would not get it at 8% in Uganda. So we are much so better. So it's much better here. We are yeah, much sure. better than in Rwanda. Yeah, yeah it's, sure. it's, 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 it doesn't it's look like we're going to win this one. <laughs> my, my, my <laughs> comment here would be uh, Rwanda is the second best place to do business in Africa. Rwanda is the number one uh, uh, most uh, competitive and, and, and uh, progressive government. So please compare it with those competing with it. In, in that category as yeah, well yeah. as business. So just to give uh, a perspective, maybe the, 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 the capital market will also, uh, which is a bit mm. nascent, will, will be an option for us. Sure. Yeah. And a dual listing with the Toronto Stock Exchange and, Absolutely. and, and, and Lon uh, London yeah. uh, uh, market would be also helpful. But yeah. it, it's imperative, it's very important that our uh, banking sector mm. start think long term with a specific sector. It's yeah. not sophisticated. This is, this is a sector which has uh, <coughs> developed different countries mm. in the whole world. And we have immense um, uh, capabilities here mm. in terms of resources. It's, it's, uh, and it's not me saying, these mm. are international studies uh, from a very renowned uh, 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 geological firm which did the survey in Rwanda. Right. So it, it is right now that we need to position ourselves hand in hand yeah. of course there is challenges yes. but we need to, to to tackle this opportunity now i think that the message has been delivered let's move on and talk about where the opportunities lie earlier on we tackled the issue of agriculture and i think it came up naturally as one of the areas that government needs to be working on but the issue around agriculture is also that we've been talking about it for quite a long time and yet the bulk of the people live there 90 percent relying on it for their survival now how do we make it contribute more to gdp uh, let's talk about some of the government initiatives on that front yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, first, l l let me start by this uh, mining sector again because that's very, very important, as uh, my friend said there. Okay. I, I think we have, we have been seeing, let me say, increased competition in our banking system since, let me say, 2010. We, we are really seeing change in it's the structure yes in the structure of the banking sector and uh, now uh, I, I think this is the time for our banking sector but also uh, other economic sectors to see how to benefit from this structural change sure. so uh, I'm, I'm very confident that uh, in one or two years we'll see big change in terms of how our banking sector will finance the mining sector mm. because that's a very, very important sector. Yeah. On the agriculture side, uh, as I said, the government has uh, put in place strategies to continue supporting the economic growth uh, to limit the impact of uh, the global conditions. Sure. One strategy is uh, uh, to be sure that the season B of this year mm. is, um, uh, is well prepared. I know that the Minister of Agriculture and all prayers are very, very busy to be sure that everything is in place so that we maximize uh, what we can get from the agriculture sector. That, that's, that is expected to be one of, uh, 
or of the contributors to mm. economic growth uh, uh, this year, 2016-17. Do you have targets in terms of where you want agriculture to contribute uh, to GDP? Between five and six. It has been contributing to uh, the, the growth of, of the sector was 5% uh, in the last two or three years. Right. We, 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 we are projecting to have the same rate or go to 6%. That's mm. extremely important. And as she well said, there is already some discussion with commercial banks to have some uh, good project to be financed by, by the commercial banks. Mm. So we are expecting to have the loan to the agriculture uh, increasing to continue supporting the effort of the government. That, 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 that's very important. But second, so, yeah. linked to agriculture sector, we have high demand in the region uh, for some product uh, manufactured food, for example. For yeah. So I, I think we have already What's the strategy there? Is there a government strategy to try to make sure that there's better, that there's more food processing yeah, locally sure, before export? Yeah, yeah, sure. The, the, what, what I've said before, first we need to be sure that the, the production itself in the, in the agriculture sector has increased. Yeah. That's the starting point. Mm. And uh, our, our industries, our manufacturing industry are were prepared because they have not been working at 100% of capacity. Sure. So uh, this will help them to to have uh, production and uh, to continue uh, exporting uh, in the region. Sure. That's that, that's about the agriculture sector. Absolutely. Yes. Before we move to the other sectors, I yeah. wanted to bring it in because on that agriculture sector, where is the opportunity? We do, I mean, we know about wand and tea, and we also know about wand and coffee. But is that is that is that an area that you guys are looking at? Uh, okay, uh, in addition to the tea and the coffee, as I said earlier, the, we, we're looking at the, uh, the grassroots, especially where uh, the Ministry of Agriculture has come in with various projects right. to support the post-harvest post activities harvest activities mm. and um, in that project they put in some money and it acts as a motivator it's actually for motivating the people who are borrowing to pay back yeah. definitely we have to do our own risk analysis yes. uh, even when those uh, guarantees are in place and uh, we are picking interest because some of these, uh, um, maybe I will again say that uh, there are other uh, initiatives in place that have encouraged the banks to do more lending. The systems are in place. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the legal structure is supportive. Yes. So when we manage our own financial risks, we know that the legal risks are managed. Sure. So we are also motivated to look further than what is happening. We have quite a number of projects we are looking at, and the, 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 people, the promoters, you see that they have been well trained, because what comes with the government initiative is also uh, capacity building. Yes. And uh, that also really um, helps us to manage the risk, because people are well clear that once they borrow, yeah. they'll be, they have to pay back. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting actually, because now, nowadays, I, I, I know, for instance, I can buy Rwandan coffee in pick and pay, in Johannesburg and my brother was in the US however he can't buy it so he says to me you buy for me and then we find our informal means through mm -hmm. which we send it so the capacity building that you're talking about perhaps needs to be ramped up more because they are parts of the world where Africans are and they want African produce but they can't find it mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, uh, um, the, there's, there's more to do. Because mm. uh, when we do uh, export our own coffee, which is not processed, it ends, yeah, it ends up, uh, it doesn't continue to be our product. Yes. But if we can produce more on the yes. market and yes. we export it as No, a the, the one I buy is uh, written made in Rwanda. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. So I think the, 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 mm -hmm. the start has already been there, but sure. perhaps more needs to be done yeah, sure. in, terms be of, done. in terms of sure. trapping yeah. it. Sure. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on and talk about the other areas. You wanted to mention, what else did you want to mention? I wanted yeah. to talk about ICT. What did you want to talk about? Yeah. Uh, let me probably cover also the ICT. I think the other sectors which are uh, expected to uh, continue supporting the economic growth in Rwanda is uh, first service, the, the service sector. The service sector, yeah. Uh, as and that's a big one this year, isn't it? Yeah, because sure. there are a lot of big meetings yeah, that are coming uh, to Rwanda uh, this year. Uh, absolutely. We have the ICT, we have uh, the financial sector. Uh, the financial sector is also expected to continue supporting the economy. Yeah. 
We have uh, hotels. That's uh, that's very important. The event side. Yes, which is um, uh, a, a one of the big biggest component of the industry. What we call construction sector. The construction sector is expected to continue supporting the economy this year with construction of roads, hotels, mm -hmm. uh, and it's where really the, 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 the banking sector also will continue to, to play its role. Sure. And uh, lastly, we, 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 we have seen Rwanda focusing on the regional demand in terms of construction material like cement and other construction material exported to uh, DRC and some other countries. Yeah. Uh, w when you just check numbers, 2015, 14, there is a big change, and uh, because uh, the demand is there, the capacity of production of some of uh, uh, industry in Rwanda has increased. So we are. I think there is a clear focus on that aspect, so that, so yeah. that we this continue to support the growth of the economy. As an economist, what would you say about, I mean, we, we've been talking about China and we've been talking about the way the government <coughs> has responded to the challenges there. Mm. Markets, when uh, numbers come in line, say, oh, okay, so the economy in China grew 6.9% in mm. line with expectations, but we know that they want higher growth and therefore they are going to come up with stimulus. Mm. In the case of Rwanda, are we there yet? Uh, are we? Are we there? We're in a situation where the government needs to come up with their economic stimulus packages to try to get growth growing higher than the 7%, 6% no, 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 that no, Not, not really, because uh, uh, we are in line with our projection. And uh, I think what the government is doing is to put in place strategies to limit the negative impact of external mm -hmm. shocks. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important. So we have fiscal policy strategies, as mm. I've been saying. So there's no big stresses that no, we can no, talk no, about no, no, that no. demand. So. No. But from a business perspective, should government be thinking about this? Could perhaps government stimulus packages for ailing industries like yours be right to consider this juncture, do you think? I, I, would, um, <clears throat> I would, you know, rec uh, call for, for more investment banking uh, mm. uh, uh, players to, to come in. Maybe wow. th that that would be that would be uh, in in comparison to 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 the commercial loans. Why, Emery? You are not happy. No, it's not that I'm not happy. That I'm 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 saying if we have uh, you know investment bankers uh, who are more like we were mentioning earlier, uh, who are more keen to to support uh, sp specific sectors like mining, yeah. but also any others um, in with long term loan. That will be the m biggest be, uh, game changer for for the development and and of, of the private sector because I see this uh, uh, seventeen percent uh, interest rate though it's, it's it might be the lowest the lowest of the, the region, region. Yeah. Uh, still a big challenge uh, yeah. to 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 the development of of the private sector which at the end of the day we know it all um, is the engine of of, of uh, economic growth. Yeah, mm. Gold, and I want Thomas to come in as well. Yeah, of, uh, as I said, uh, for the, the, the ground is already leveled for us bankers uh, when there is a legal system in place. Mm. And you know that uh, your mortgage, uh, you, you can register your mortgages and you can uh, uh, realize the mortgages. In the case, it's not our business definitely to sell what we get from the uh, from our clients, yeah. but uh, in case things go bad, you need to get back the money because the money we lend out is actually sure. not our money. So we are looking at that kind of platform to ride on. And right now, um, if uh, the, 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 the the platform for the, uh, for movable pro properties can can also be worked on, because right now we can't take debentures. Uh, it would also uh, help in fostering growth because some of the uh, companies or businesses, they have the equipment which we could maybe take on as a, or a, a, an adventure. Mm. But because now we cannot successfully register a debenture, yeah. uh, there are other um, uh, components of the, legal, of the legal system in that area that have to be da sure. uh, yeah. dealt with. Yeah. Then that one would also <coughs> increase our dealing uh, with uh, those who don't have uh, um, fixed assets sure. but have movable pro uh, Absolutely. Uh, Thomas, two issues for you to deal with. One, mm. the issue of uh, enabling the creation of a market where debentures can be uh, listed. And secondly, the issue of licensing more investment banks because that perhaps will foster greater competition and allow choice uh, for, 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 for industry. Sure, I agree with, uh, 
with the, the, the comments. Look, when you are managing the economy in a country, I think Rwanda has been doing very well. We, let me say 2016, we have challenges from the global market and the government has put in place different strategies to be sure that we continue growing as planned. But in addition to that, as some step of economic development, you see, when we are, we, we are, you are achieving good results, mm. it also creates new challenges. Yes. And uh, th that's why I agree with, with, with the two colleagues here. So the government and the private sector are always thinking about innovation. Mm. Innovation means increase this development bank because there is a need today. New products. Yeah, exactly. New product, new thinking, new regulatory framework to support yes. new ideas. Yes. That will be at the end of the day the, the, the one of our life mm. as the economic managers. Sure. Yes, absolutely, because that, that, that's the way we sustain a uh, good result like what you have been achieving in Rwanda. Sure. So it's not new. Is that something I, that you would look at? Yeah, yeah, we have started already to, to think about okay. this possibility. Can you give a time frame? Oh, no. We, we are yet. thinking about that. Okay. And I'll bring him in in about three uh, months uh, and I'm going to be asking no, him uh, how far uh, he's uh, gone. And you see countries which have been able to sustain the economic development are those who, uh, which have been able to to adjust the policies yeah. to new environment. Absolutely. So we, we, you have good success, new challenges, yeah. how you adjust your policies, that, that, that's most important. And I think Rwanda we have, been, we have shown that we are able to adjust our policies. Yeah. So this uh, issue of financing agriculture, financing mining sector, yeah. Financing long-term project, as he well said, because yeah. that issue came up last year. Actually, the issue of getting more investment banks into Rwanda. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, for commercial banks, they, they have short-term liquidity. Yes, yes. And this can't be enough to yes. continue supporting. And they can't deploy that money to support yeah, exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we we are thinking about that. Yeah. Do you have any applications of guys who are coming in from abroad? Oh. Why is JP Morgan not here? Uh, <laughs> le, 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 let us talk about it uh, next time. But w okay. what I need to say here is that uh, these ideas are there, mm. and uh, new ideas will continue to come as we, we are doing very well with new challenges yep. and the new solutions. What about tourism? Uh, we had a debate last year on tourism, and I think everybody was saying this is an area that is easier than many other sectors. Not the huge amounts of money that he's talking about. <laughs> the skill set is not so difficult to be able to get the people that you come in, you train people and that kind of thing. How big an opportunity do you see that as? I think the, 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 the economy, uh, the, the political uh, status of the economy yeah. has really been a, a driving factor in that sector. Because um, the way our country is sold out, it's um, a destination one shouldn't miss. Yeah. So when you look at uh, the number of uh, 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 tourists coming in, uh, compared to the figures of 2000, there's yeah. been mm. uh, a great, a great jump in the figures. Mm. And thus, uh, as bankers, we have been supporting the tourism sector sure. uh, through the construction of the new facilities. Yeah. However, you get a lot of business in that area. Yeah, there is, yeah, there, sure. is there is, yeah. there is, yeah, there is, yeah, there is. And uh, uh, the, 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 there's quite a lot that is really going on in that side. Uh, leave alone the at, uh, knowing that we have uh, also a third of the gorillas in the country. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the culture itself. People wanting, hearing about Rwanda and knowing that it has been um, a successful development story. Yeah. It's also attractive enough so for so people to come in and see what is happening in the country. Yesterday we were having a, a Rotary meeting and one of the Rotarians visiting from uh, uh, the US said that uh, to when he was talking, when she was talking to someone, they said, "Oh, I really want to go to to Rwanda. Next time you're going, please don't leave me behind." Mm. So the successful story sells it Absolutely. and says it all. What about the other issue? And uh, we, we we need to round up now. What about the other issue that is sort of overshadowing the region? So we've got the elections coming up in the DRC this year. We've got elections coming up in Uganda this year. We have uh, unrest in uh, Burundi 
and uh, that's beginning to be felt, I think, regionally. Uh, in Tanzania, the elections were held last year, so that's well and good. Is the security situation beginning to perhaps impact the attractiveness of Rwanda, given its position and the countries that we've just talked about now? Uh, no, not really. Uh, but, uh, as you, you know, this is a challenge. We need to have everything going well in the region mm. to support uh, yeah. economic mm. development. But uh, we, for me, that's my own view. I'm not really uh, expecting to have much problem around the yeah. region because yeah. of that. Let us hope that what is happening in the Burundi will also uh, be solved as quick Absolutely. as possible. But how so important is the DRC to have a good election that produces uh, a, a result that is universally accepted and that country continues stable? For Rwanda? Uh, I'm not a specialist on, uh, on this uh, political issues, but. W From an economic perspective? Yes, exactly. As a regional trading yeah, partner. That, that, that's very important. I yeah. think when you just uh, analyze the demand from DRC for our pro products, mm -hmm. this is uh, what we call in economy, uh, th there are good which are inelastic means this demand will be there absolutely will be there because people will need to consume our food yeah yeah and, and as i said we hope that everything will continue to go very well to yeah continue at, uh, creating much demand they have security mm. but uh, uh, as economists are not seeing really uh, big challenge on mm. that side but it's a huge opportunity yeah yeah it is when you look and at even what for you as well from yeah when you look at what we export in our neighboring countries it's mm. mostly to do with uh, uh, the, the consumption uh, for consumption purposes yes and that is not going to stop whether there is insecurity or whether it's yeah, not there but of course as an economy same. as a, as a country mm. just uh, those that are uh, in that kind of uh, uh, sector who are in charge of security, yeah. I, I, they have to take caution. As yeah, sure. uh, you know, the way it is said in my culture, that when your neighbor's house is burning, you don't sit there and laugh. That's true. So, but uh, I don't see much challenge in terms of uh, uh, our banking, our financial sector, mm. in terms of our inter-trade, uh, because uh, the goods involved will continue to be consumed anyway. Absolutely. It's just that we have to take caution. Yeah, even you, Emery, as well. Sure. Yeah. Yes, uh, we have been uh, in, in our sector uh, heavily affected by mm -hmm. by some um, uh, political or, or security uh, aspect of some neighboring countries. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you'll be aware aware of uh, the fact that uh, Frank Dodd Act has been uh, one of the challenges that we have faced. Please explain that one. Yes, this is uh, an American law uh, affecting the the mining sector in the region, mm. including Rwanda, considering that we are in a conflict. Which is not in conflict itself. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So we, there, is, there were a lot of efforts uh, from the government side to highlight uh, the fact that Rwanda is not at all in, in a conflict uh, situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a lot of positive efforts in that direction. But in <coughs> the current situation, we are not in a position to export to, to the United States, for instance. Right, because of that. Because of that. So yeah. these, these are definitely we are affected by the situation in the neighboring countries. Um, uh, luckily, we have uh, outstanding government having uh, so well performed uh, in, in all the standards internationally. Yeah. That helps because then the partners uh, um, are, are, are with us and they know that it's, it's a political issue yeah. uh, which needs to be resolved. So yes, we are affected. We yeah. are affected by Absolutely, and I'm certainly hoping that the DRC will hold a credible election in the November. There will be a we new president. So. I had an interview with uh, one of the contenders the other day in Johannesburg, and he was very, very hopeful that there will be peaceful change and uh, there will be a new government that will be sitting in the DRC and that will open up the economic opportunity uh, for the region. That's our program for today where we've been discussing where Rwanda is going in 2016 and if the DRC performs, who knows where Rwanda could be come 2017. Let me thank my guest, Thomas Kigabo, Chief Economist, Central Bank of Rwanda, Eddie Gold Monday, Managing Director of uh, Crane Bank, and uh, Emery Rubagenga, CEO of Rokamani. Thank you all for watching the program today. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>